This conference will now be recorded. Okay. Hi, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to this pre-recorded session for Meet the Consumer Science Team series for CV edition. So um, for any questions you have regarding the team presentations or interested in any one-on-one -on -one follow up conversations with any of our researchers, um, please reach out to our alias consumer science at amazon.com. Um, during this session, you'll hear from three of our Amazon teams who are using research and CV to enhance our customers' experience across uh, video, augmented reality, search, and much more. So today we're actually going to be featuring senior applied scientist Frederick Devernay from the imaging science team, um, senior applied science manager Michael Liu from Visual Search, and from the home innovation team, senior applied science manager Alicia Martinez. And so without further ado, I'd like to introduce um, Frederick with Image Sciences. Thank you. Um, so hello, my name is Frédéric de Vernet. Uh, I am and I am currently with the uh, Amazon uh, Imaging Technology team. So um, I've been at Amazon for three years and before that I was a researcher at INRIA in France doing 3D computer vision. Today I will present the work we are pursuing on scaling photorealistic 3D content creation. creation with 3D computer vision and machine learning. So photorealistic 3D content is being used for several experiences available on amazon.com. This includes the detail page where the product photo is sometimes replaced by a 3D render of higher quality than the original photo. This also includes the 360 spin experience which displays a ray trace version of the rotating 3D object. Also, we have the interactive sh shopping experience where furniture in a showroom can be mixed and matched. And all these furniture are actually 3D models that are ray traced. And we also have the augmented reality experience, which allows you to view the product in your room and will be detailed later by Michael. Of course, you can imagine uh, many more uses for that 3D content. For example, to generate synthetic, realistic home environment for machine learning and robotics. So what is 3D content really? Well, 3D content is first about geometry. It has to be accurate, both in terms of general shape, but also in terms of small details, which are sometimes equally important for the customer. It also has to be editable by artists because we do not expect the computer vision algorithm to give perfect results 100% of the time. So we prefer higher level primitives and movable parts rather than the triangle mesh, which is output by most 3D reconstruction methods. But as you can see, geometry is not everything. And 3D content is also about materials. Materials have to be photorealistic, which means they cannot be reduced to a texture extracted to, from the images. They contain several components to enable physically based rendering and have to be of high resolution so that they can be viewed and rendered from any distance and under any lighting. This looks like a very difficult problem to solve, but 3D artists are able to create these high quality 3D models from just a few photographs, typically one to five. How do they do? Well, the thing is, we have seen lots of examples of chairs and other 3D objects in our lives. And so have the artists. And we, and we have learned about the many possible appearances and arrangements of parts in these objects. So why not learn from existing 3D model and use that in a computer vision algorithm to reconstruct these 3D shapes from just a few images? And it's the same for materials. We can immediately recognize a wood or a leather grain, a given type of fabric, or a metal finish from a single image. 
we can learn to recognize these materials and build representations that have more texture resolution than the original images. So to solve the problem of photorealistic 3D content creation, what we propose is to use a reference corpus uh, model corpus with tens of thousands of artists made photorealistic 3D models and combine machine learning, 3D computer vision and computer graphics to build a photorealistic 3D model from a few images. More specifically, we use techniques such as shape retrieval, automatic shape deformation and editing to fit it to the images and material segmentation and recognition to build our artist editable 3D models. We are also pursuing another research direction, which consists in using recent neural rendering techniques to bypass the explicit creation of a 3D model and directly generate the novel views. Our goal with the imaging sciences team is to build 3D models for all products in the Amazon, Amazon catalog, not only chairs. And so thank you for listening. And now I'll hand it over to Michael for the next presentation. Hello, Frederick. Uh, thanks, Frederick. Hello, everyone. I'm Michael Lu. Uh, Applied Science Manager on the Visual Search and Augmented Reality team at Amazon. A little background of myself, I've been working at Amazon close to 10 years and uh, worked on most of the projects that I'm going to talk about and all of our features actually shipped inside the Amazon mobile shopping app. I really enjoy the fact that we're building products that are directly consumed by millions of customers and at the same time we kept innovating our products through science. So today I'm going to talk about how we've been applying computer vision technologies to help customers shop at Amazon. As our team name suggests, we're chasing two directions. The first direction is that we use visual signal to search products. When you see a product as a physical store and you want to see if there's a better price elsewhere, you would try to describe using words and you want to use those words to form a text search to find products. And we want to automate that process for you. As you open the Amazon app, you will see the camera icon uh, next to the search bar, which is where our feature sits. Just like when you phrase the search, uh, search query by looking at the product, the more precise information you can provide, the better result you will get. We also try to extract as much valuable information from image as possible to help the search problem. Some of you may be familiar with the image retrieval system. We managed to scale our solution to search from millions of Amazon product within hundreds of milliseconds. Um, in the old days, we saved like features and it's been replaced by deep learning features today. 1D and 2D barcodes continue to be popular because they're accurate and fast decoding. Most products have text. We use syntax recognition techniques to extract text and use those texts to refine our search results. This is particularly helpful when text can be used to do fine growing classification. For product with little distinguishing feature, a product that does not sold on Amazon, we use semantic understanding and visual similarity to help finding similar products or products within the same category. Of course, this is not a solved problem. We believe the future of visual search is to be a complementary text search. So we've been working with the Amazon search team to see how we can directly turn an image into search query and to fuse behavior, behavior data into the search results. Another interesting thing is that we learned the best result is not always the visually closed products, since there, since there are many other factors like price and seller, et cetera. So we've been trying to improve our ranking algorithm to ensure, ensure that we produce the most relevant results. We have been working with the visual search algorithm for more than a decade now. Built on top of our learnings two years ago, we have launched a new feature called StyleSnap. Many of you probably remember the famous blue versus gold dress arguments. Sometimes fashion items can be really difficult to describe precisely their color pattern style. So we develop deep learning models to detect different parts of clothes and to learn feature embeddings to find similar products. 
there's always a domain gap between the in the wild and the catalog images. So make sure that the embedding we learned can accommodate for that. Recently, we have expanded feature to recognize also home furniture. There were many additional challenges, such as handling occluded objects and different perspectives. We use 3D synthetic data to help in the training process to bridge the gap. Speaking of 3D, another direction that our team are working on is to let customer view products in 3D in their own environments using augmented reality technologies. A very big pain point for online shopping is that they're not able to see the product from every angle, let alone see it in their room. And the worst shopping experience is that when you brought the item and you found it does not fit and you have to return it. So we developed AI technology to address this problem. The first thing we need to do is obviously the model creation. Fortunately, Frederick's team has generated many 3D furniture models that can directly render in AR. However, objects like this, the one that I'm showing here, have complex structure, texture, and the material, and requires a lot of time for humans to model. So we worked with the image science team to introduce a scanning process and a new model format to encode object light fields. At runtime, we use our in-house light field rendering techniques to render those models in 3D. Once you enter the AR experience from the detail page, the next step is to determine the position or orientation of the camera with respect to customer's room. So we use a visual initial odometry system to produce both the camera pose as well as the exact surface for customer to place virtual objects on. On top of the scene geometry information, we have been trying to add more semantic understanding of the environment to better, cut, better guide customers through the experience. A couple of examples include understanding the wall to make sure that the virtual object will not be placed outside of the room, automatically finding empty areas to place the virtual objects. Last year, we have released a new development called Save Your Room. We allow customers to save their AR session and reuse them across different platforms. With this offline experience, we're able to add more computational power to the scene understanding task and extract even more information to help customers in their experience. Our long-term vision is to create a digital replica of customers' room and generate inspiration ideas that fit well within their room. This year, we also further expanded our AI capability into other categories. We just launched a virtual try-on feature to Glasses, and we believe our customer can benefit from AR-based virtual try-on for many other categories, such as makeup, jewelry, etc. We've been working on really state-of-the-art technologies in both computer vision and computer graphics, and we're looking for talent to join the team. Thank you. I'll hand it to Alicia for the next talk. Thanks very much, Michael. Um, so as a first introduction to myself, I work uh, in a department called Home here at Amazon. I am Alish Martinez. I've been working in machine learning and computer vision for the last 25 plus years. And I've been extremely active in the CVPR community. So much so that I actually organized CVPR in Columbus back in 2014. And I've been involved as an area chair and other um, uh, now domains at CVPR for many, many, many years. I am creating a brand new team here at Amazon uh, dedicated to science, and we are very interested in basic and applied sciences, in especially machine learning and computer vision. And our goal is mostly to publish in conferences like CVPR. So if you're interested, we have plenty of openings at all levels right now looking for people. So come join us. Yeah, we're going to have a lot of fun. Um, our research that I have done with my students uh, at Ohio State, where I'm a professor, and here at Amazon has uh, been published at all these conferences and top journals. We actually won the Best Paper Award at ECCB a few years ago, and we're uh, one of the finalists for the Best Paper Award last year at CVPR. Uh, we've also published papers in PEMI, PNAS, and many other places. So. Uh, great excitement uh, to be creating this new team here at Amazon. Uh, the research that we do includes or goes over pretty much every area that you see at CVPR. So if you are publishing CVPR, most likely we're interested. And I'll showcase a few examples 
applications that Amazon is working on here at home that relate to the research, meaning that includes the research that we develop. And I just want to emphasize that we work on the research component and develop the ML and computer vision, not necessarily the final product that you see uh, here in the slides. So to begin with, uh, let me uh, go over uh, Discover, which is one of our products in home. And Discover is just basically a way for our customers to easily find products that they like rather than just using a query search uh, using text uh, for products that are very difficult to describe. Uh, we allow customers to scroll through a variety of product types like furniture, home decor, lighting, kitchen and dining, etc. that you see here. Maybe you're interested in furniture, so you can now click on furniture. Now you see a lot of products and now you can start liking and disliking products and you see I, as I like and dislike products, the products that are shown in the image change. It's because there's an embedding space behind us where we uh, pop up uh, products that are most similar according to that embedding space to the ones that you like and most dissimilar to the ones that you dislike. And we're doing a lot of research on these embedding spaces. Uh, there are a lot of uh, algorithms you know, using CNNs. We're now obviously using also transformers to see which ones were better, et cetera. So again, exciting uh, fundamental work that we can uh, do on this domain. Uh, the other project I want to showcase here is called uh, Shop the Room, or most known as Discover Rooms. It's actually a product that was showcased also by Amazon very recently. And it's a beautiful experience where you actually can scroll through uh, hundreds of thousands of different rooms. You can even search for them using filters, such as uh, this one here, where I can just say I'm interested in California casual style. And then the machine learning behind the system will select the ones that are from this style. Then you can also search for similar rooms, again, embedding spaces here to determine where is a similar room. Now, when you click on the room, you have all these products that are tagged. All these tags are automatically created by computer vision algorithms of object detection, product tag detection, and then similarity models to determine all the products in the Amazon catalog that are similar to the one in that room. So that allows customers to explore hundreds of thousands of rooms uh, very quickly in just a matter of minutes and uh, select from the filters with regard to room type. Uh, we have living rooms, bedrooms, kitchens, bathrooms, outdoors, like patios, etc. And you can scroll through a variety of over a hundred different product types right now that we tag with the machine learning computer vision algorithms. And then with the similarity I want to just showed here, you can actually then go and determine which are the most similar ASINs. So you can actually scroll through thousands and thousands of ASINs that are similar to the one shown in the image, find the one that you really like, and uh, compare prices, shapes, colors, etc. It's a pretty cool. Uh, a pretty cool product that we have. And again, lots of ML behind it. Another very exciting project that we have, it's called Collections. And I prefer to call it an AI interior designer because basically this is your personal interior designer, only that it's an AI interior designer uh, that uses computer vision and ML to come up with suggestions. So basically the way it works, if you're in detail page of a product, like this coffee table here, if you scroll down in detail page, you'll see this widget and you'll see these collections. And this collection of items are items that combine well with the uh, seat item like the coffee table here. And then when you find items that you may like, you click here. And then for that item, obviously as well, you have a new set of collections that you can uh, scroll through. Again, products that combine well with this uh, central item. This is a really hard problem for machine learning. I mean, we are trying to simulate what a, an expert interior designer, a human, does, right? How do you determine where the products are combined well with the ones that you have at your home? So, um, very exciting research, very uh, complicated models from ML and for computer vision that are used here 
is a tremendous amount of research, especially using transformers that we are uh, applying to this. Uh, fantastic opportunities for you to work on this. Also, we are working with uh, Michael's group uh, and other groups to add this into Stylus Nap, where you have that little camera that he showed. And so you can actually take a picture of your own room and then we can give you suggestions of collections for that. Uh, and uh, all this is already available, so it's pretty cool uh, how it works. And uh, the last project I want to showcase here is something that's extremely related to what both Frederick and Michael have presented, which is how do we show these uh, three-dimensional models into your own environment, right? And that involves a lot of three-dimensional vision. 3D vision is something super important for Frederick and for my team. So please come in uh, if you are interested in this, uh, in this project, or at least talk to us uh, to learn more. Uh, so here's basically the experience. You start with a central item that you want to show or you want to visualize in your own room. And then you just point your camera and this uh, algorithm will determine the structure of your environment, right? And we'll place a three-dimensional model that Frederick's group has created into that environment. You can rotate the model, you can move around and see how the product actually looks from a variety of vantage points. It's actually really cool the way these things work. I think there's just tremendous amount of opportunity uh, for these products to only get better over the years as machine learning computer vision improves. Um, uh, the amount of collaboration that there is within Amazon, especially within science, is really, really tremendous. We collaborate with, obviously, Michael's and Frederick's groups, but we also collaborate with many other teams uh, that work in computer vision and machine learning here at Amazon. My team, in particular, has open collaborations probably with six or seven other teams right now at just this very moment so we keep uh, getting into more collaborations and i think that's another great uh, reason uh, to work here and with that i'll pass back to the host perfect thank you everyone um we do have like a couple minutes so if you are up for it we do have um a couple of frequently asked questions um, that we received from conference attendees, especially for, for from CVPR and ECCV. So um, I'll ask the question and um, feel free to answer. Um, there is one that um, someone usually asks for each of the panelists. So what kind of background or skill, um, for example, advanced mathematics, stats, computer science algorithms do you find extremely valuable in your day? So as a manager or um, you know, as, a, as a scientist at Amazon? I can probably get a start with regard to the science that we do and then maybe Michael and Frederick can follow up on other types of more applied scientists. Uh, the, the type of scientists in my group usually have a PhD. You don't have to have a PhD, but uh, you have to have lots of experience. So 99% of the cases that is someone with a PhD in computer vision or machine learning, uh, or maybe statistics and math. Um, experience in doing this type of research is very important. Uh, having papers at top conferences like CVPR is important. Uh, and being a good coder, it's really important. Uh, you know, it's, it doesn't get easier <laughs> if uh, you're not able to test a lot of algorithms. Uh, we have the resources to test a lot of algorithms and implement different variants of the algorithms, but at the same time, you have to have those skills. Uh, particularly in my case, I find it uh, really useful to have a really strong background in linear algebra in statistics and in computer vision and machine learning because that allows you to read the new literature very quickly and adapt to the changes in uh, research uh, areas or uh, the, 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 the different topics that are coming up like transformers recently. Um, if you don't have that background, you might find it really hard to transition quickly. So I would encourage everyone to do their due diligence in really creating a a strong background on those domains. So yeah, I want to echo what uh, Alicia mentioned. Um, yeah, first, uh, I would say that um, 
have a really good solid understanding of mathematics um, usually helps uh, along the way, right? Um, and many of the uh, latest uh, advanced technologies are built based on that. And uh, once you have that, uh, have a really strong curiosity and making sure that you keep learning the latest uh, state-of-the-art techniques because this field is progressing really fast, right? Um, and the third thing I want to add on that is um, don't be afraid about uh, your um, your domain. Uh, check with us. Amazon is really large. There are many, many teams working on a lot of different problems. Uh, even if you're working on medical imaging, who knows, maybe there's a team that works um, best for you as well. So check with us and um, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm exactly in line with, with what Michael just said. I mean, the nice thing about Amazon is that whatever your specialty is, there is a team at Amazon that needs you. So uh, if you have a PhD, I think you can safely apply and, and there is probably a team that needs you. Perfect, great answer. So we'll do one more. Um, what are some of the most challenging areas or problems in the CV field today and why? Uh, I can start. Uh, I think, um, I, and I guess my answer will probably align with uh, Frederick because I think uh, there's a there's a, this particular problem called 3D reconstruction, and it can be a 3D reconstruction of object or it can be a 3D reconstruction of the environment. Um, people have been studying this field for a very long time, but um, even with the latest advance of uh, neural network, I think we're still getting to a certain percentage. There's still a very large gap on that, right? Particularly. I think understanding how the lighting affects your overall um, semantic understanding, how to decompose that. Our humans are really good at it. I think computers still, there's a long way to go to decompose those factors and maybe not decompose them, but learn them all together and, and really try to uh, learn both the geometry and the semantic information of the environment. Uh, I, I think it's still a, a research topic uh, that has, um, has a lot of things that we can, we can work on. Frederick, do you want to go next? Um, yeah, I, I think I think uh, computer vision has been very successful in the recent years to to get a coarse grain uh, a coarse grain description of the the world around us. So things like classification, semantic segmentation, and things like that. But uh, uh, the very fine grain problems, such as three D reconstruction and reconstruction of the SVBRDF of the surface of the object are really challenging problems that we are uh, looking forward to solve. Uh, my team is also interested in 3D vision, so I second everything that's been said thus far. Um, I would add to this that uh, reasoning in AI is one big problem that has not consistently been addressed or has not been successfully addressed yet. Uh, so. Object detection, yeah, it sort of works uh, in many environments now, uh, even in the wild. But uh, reasoning about the environment, human behavior, uh, modeling humans, etc., or very highly non-deformable objects is something that is making progress, but still in its infancy. There is a tremendous amount of research in that area. And go back to something that Michael said earlier, uh, our three groups do not work in medical imaging, but there is a lot of tremendous uh, interest in medical imaging. And there are a gazillion of problems in medical imaging that are really hard and completely unsolved right now. And it doesn't seem that the current methods that we have, that we're using in CVPR, actually are going to be sufficient to solve these problems. So there's amazing research going on in that area. Perfect. Um, you guys are doing so well. Okay, I was just joking. We're going to do one more question. So, um, how do you balance between production efforts, so deliverables, versus research efforts, so innovation at Amazon? Sure, I can start. Um, I I would say um, in my team, the science team, meaning my team within my department, uh, my team just does the science and we have our engineers who actually do all the production productionization of what uh, we implement so in our case 90 
plus percent of the work is just in innovation and developing those uh, latest methods and publishing the research. We do collaborate obviously with the engineers and serve as you know a bridge between the science that we performed and the product that they implement. I can go next. Uh, so slightly different from Alicia's team, our team actually, our scientists are directly working on the production. So our approach we're taking is that um, we try to create a portfolio for every individual as well as for the group. And the portfolio meaning that um, maybe 70% of the time you work on the in innovation, 30% uh, of the time you work on the production. Um, we try to find a good ratio for everyone so that make sure that uh, at each individual milestone you have deliverables, but as well as you have a long-term vision that you're investing for, for maybe three to five years. And that way, uh, I think it works for a lot of the groups that has this kind of hybrid, um, because you, as a science team, you want to not stop. You want to think about for the long term, but at the same time, you also want to be able to um, have immediate impact on your customer. Yes, yeah, so, so we, we are working with production goals very often, but what I, what I noticed when working at Amazon is that actually uh, taking the exercise of writing an actual paper, an actual scientific paper, uh, actually boosts uh, the, the research and, and enables new results that, that were often unexpected. So uh, I, 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 I help uh, many of the scientists on our team to, to write those papers because uh, usually there's a big jump in the technology when we write a paper. So great answers. So um, I just want to thank you know my panelists today and for taking the time to um, speak about your teams, give us a glimpse of your projects and what you're doing and innovating. Um, and thank you, audience, for joining us today and tuning in. So again, if you have any questions or interested in any one-on-one -on -one follow-up conversations with any of our researchers, um, reach out to our alias Consumer Science at Amazon.com. So thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. This conference will now be recorded.